Girişimcilik Dünyası ile karşınızdayız. Ben Güzem Yılmaz Ersen. Bugün MySize CEO'su Ronan Luzon bizimle. Hem application'ı hem de aslında MySize'ın dünyadaki trendinden sonra Türkiye'ye girişini konuşacağız Ronan Luzon'la. Ve özellikle Nasdaq Kote olan bu şirketteki finansal durum detaylar. Türkiye'deki yatırım planlarını da detaylı bir şekilde masaya yatıracağız. Hi Mr. Luzon, welcome on show. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. First of all, uh, let's talk about what is MySize and what is your for and could you please can you summarize uh, how the op uh, application works okay so we started the company back in 2014 mm -hmm. and the idea behind the company was to change the way people buying clothes online especially now because when you're going online and you want to buy something there is different size between retailer and retailer for example if you buy a dress in Zara it doesn't mean that you have the same size when you buy a dress in Polo of Ralph Lauren so what ends up is that you're buying something and you finally return it because the size doesn't fit so who pays for every, all of this is usually the retailers they're suffering from a lot of returns in the US is about 30 to 50 percent in Germany it's about 70 percent the returns are enormous in Germany, 70 percent 70 percent yes it's it's an absurd situation some of the returns are saying that they're paying more on the logistics than they're uh -huh. paying on the item itself to to make it mm. so it's that it, it's that absurd and if you're taking into account the conversion rate that's about two percent conversion rate when people buying online in opposed to 30 40 percent when they're going to the stores themselves so there is a lot of efforts being done on the e-commerce and mainly it's about sizing 70 percent of all the returns are because of sizing So we came up with an idea that using the mobile phone sensors and only mm -hmm. the sensors itself, when you move the phone from one place to another, we know to measure the distance the phone is traveling. I tried yesterday. You tried? <laughs> yeah, and? Yeah, yeah. Yes, you get I, it work? I, I, yes, I, I love them. And also, uh, how did this idea come to your mind? So One day you wake up and, <laughs> yes, this is my size, you said. <laughs> so it's a... Uh, my size is my fourth startup in the building mm, uh, okay. so it's my fourth company i'm always thinking about ideas something that it struggled in the day to day and my size came up uh, when my kid back then he was now he's 15 back then he was about 11 and he loves mba so For your kids, uh, yes so, first of all. so every week or so he was changing teams so he started from the la lakers and then moved to boston and every now and then mm. i want a new custom And I, we ordered a new custom, it didn't fit. So I said, come on, that's it. <laughs> Something needs to change here. Mm -hmm. So I thought about how can we use that device that we live with mm -hmm. that will measure us as well. So I came up with that idea that, and what, we've, what we came up, which is so unique in what we do, is that we use the only, only the sensors. So we don't use the camera. So we don't, you don't need to take a picture of yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't need to undress in order to take a picture. You just move the phone over your body. It's very easy, it's very private. And today as well that we got a lot of demand from companies that sell lingerie, especially for women, for bras, which is one of the major issue for women to buy a bra online because most of you don't know your size in bras and that's a major issue. And for these retailers that want to sell it, they need a tool for the women out there to have it enough privacy that you don't need to take a picture of yourself uh, or wearing the very limited clothes. Just move the phone over your body and get your bra size in their mm -hmm. specific retailer. So that's what we came up with. And what is the total dominant number of my size, size up and box size ID? Yeah? That's right, <laughs> yes. So we came up with different, uh, for our solution that uh -huh. what we came up with is an algorithm that used the mobile phone sensor to measure. Mm -hmm. And the idea behind the company was for the apparel market. But as things evolve and um, took us about two years to make it happen, mm -hmm. We came up that this, this, this solution can work for many different vertical markets. So each one of them has its own product. For the, for the apparel, it's my size ID. For the logistic, it's box size ID. And for the DIY, it's size up. Each and every one of them has their own uh, downloads. For example, in size up, we've uh, uh, reached over 1 million uh, uh, downloads. On, on the size up. The My Size ID, we just released it in last September in Fashion Week in New York. Uh -huh. So we have a couple of thousands, I believe around the 10,000 uh, downloads over there. So it's, 10, it's about, yeah. Uh, so it's evolving. It's, uh, it, we're selling it mainly to the retailers. Mm -hmm. So we have B2B solution. So the retailer integrate our solution within their business, within mm -hmm. their uh, uh, e-commerce, and they can use it. So for example, 
if you take Adidas, for example. Mm -hmm. If you go for an Adidas and yeah. you want to get your running shirt in Adidas, mm -hmm. you will download the Adidas app and we will be mm -hmm. integrated with inside the Adidas app. So you take the Adidas app, you move the so phone. So different solution for different brands? Right. That's mm -hmm. right. Okay. That's right. And uh, how many countries so do you operate? So we are we're focusing now on the US and in Europe. Uh -huh. So Turkey is one of the countries that we selected in Europe uh, to work in because we, uh, we know and we think that uh, Turkey is a leading in apparel. This and is the main factor. This is one of the main, yes, this is one of the main mm -hmm. factors. It's um, leading in technology. Turkey is leading mm -hmm. in technology in mobile users. Uh, in e-commerce and the usage of uh, this type of technology. And can you give me information about your global and Turkish partners and what goals do you have for Turkey? So because we're a publicly traded company and we traded both in Tel Aviv and in NASDAQ, so mm -hmm. we cannot disclose everything that we have. So part of the information is still under, under NDA, mm -hmm. but we already signed two agreements in Turkey with leading retailers in, in Turkey. Hopefully we can release their names very, very soon. Mm -hmm. We start integration as well, mm -hmm. um, that uh, we start using our product. One of them is uh, a company that owns by a very big uh, conglomerate in, in Turkey that will start using our product. The other one is another company in Turkey that sells mainly bras and uh, swimwear uh, that will start using our, our product as well. So this is part of our penetration inside the Turkish market and how to use it. Other, uh, comp other uh, verticals that we're looking at, now we have several pilots uh, that are using the box size ID for, log for the logistics. Mm -hmm. We're inside the logistic, we can increase the revenues of the logistic companies. Mm -hmm. So they can just move the mobile device over the packages and get the exact volume of the package that they want to send. So how much money does my size invest in Turkey? That's, that's a good <laughs> question. Yeah, if you can share us, we that's are so question. happy. Uh, we, we're investing both on the PR side. So well, what's we, your aim, maybe? Um, the aim is about uh, uh, between uh, half to 1.5 million dollars a year to invest in mm -hmm. Turkey to get this mm -hmm. uh, a product up and running and uh, to, to make it in every retailer and every logistic company that will start using our solution inside Turkey. And uh, could you please give more details about your income model and uh, what was your revenue for the last year? and? For, for globally? So we haven't projected any revenues yet uh, in, in, in the, on, on, the public, on the public side. Uh, mm -hmm. our, our business model is per use, so we license our solution. So mm -hmm. we don't sell the solution because our solution is cloud-based. Mm -hmm. So when a consumer is using our solution and is using it through a retailer, through a log logistic partner, he's using our solution. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you go to Adidas or you go to Zara or any other partner that's using our solution, you will use our solution. So when you go to Adidas website and you click on the, the widget that we give to Adidas to get your recommended size on mm -hmm. that specific item that you want to buy, we're going to charge Adidas for a mm. certain amount of cents per click. Mm, okay. So that's how our business model works. It's per per use and there is a packages for every retailer to select. And also how many brands do you work with in Turkey so far? So in Turkey we signed up with two uh -huh. uh, so far. Uh, and we have... You can share with us the name. Uh, No, not yet because no, they're still okay. under NDA. <laughs> I, I wish, yes. Still okay. there. We haven't... That's, that's one of the trick part mm -hmm. of being a publicly traded company, especially in Nasdaq. Okay. You have to announce everything publicly yeah, first in the PR and then you can right. release it. And uh, how many people work for my size, both globally and Turkey now, right now? So uh, in Turkey, we have a country manager here in Turkey. We mm -hmm. have uh, 30 people uh, uh, back in, in Tel Aviv. And there are, in Europe, there are about uh, four salespersons mm -hmm. in Europe. And there are in the US, another four salespersons in, in the US that working. And now we're expanding our sales because we just now started sales. We just not started sales back in last September. Our product has been uh, uh, mm -hmm. developed and released last September. So we start uh, building a sales team mm -hmm. uh, both in Europe and the US. And now we start uh, pushing our product both on, on both their areas. And let's talk about the competitors for uh, your brand. Do you have any competitors in the world? And if yes, what advantages do you offer uh, the compared to them? Yeah. 
So first, yes, we have competition. That's mm -hmm. good because if we don't have a competition, it means we don't have a market. So yes, we have a competition. Mm -hmm. And our main difference is that how we work, how we actually try to tackle the problem of fit and size. Most of our competitors are using either the camera so the camera, the, the main disadvantage... They use? They use the camera. And they use, sorry. They use the camera, and the main disadvantage of the camera, especially on apparel, is privacy. Mm. Because if I will take a picture of, with my jacket, it will take the contour of my jacket. Yeah, of so I need to take my jacket off and my shirt off. Yeah, in it's order right, to... since I didn't use my camera. That's right. Only with phone. Right. So that is one of our, ma our, mm. our main advantages, to use... Uh, that, we, that we don't use the camera. And we actually take the body uh, measurement of the consumer. So the retailer will have the body measurement of the consumer. So we can offer you only items that fit you. Even moreover than that, you can know what fit you need. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you like to get your running, sh your running shirt tight, but if you like to get your dress loose, you can say that I want to get my running shirt tight, but I want to get my dress loose because I know how your body, what's your body measurement. I can give you an every, each and every product you select. I can give you the item based on your personal preferences. Well, this is a huge advantage for the consumer and the retailer alike. So that is what we give, which other, other uh, competition doesn't give. Mm -hmm. Other competitors that we have in the market are using big data. So mm. it's only questions. They ask you questions like, what's your height? What's your weight? What's the last item you bought? And what size it was? And based on these uh, uh, answers, they give you the right size. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's based on estimation. It's not on your actual body mm -hmm. measurement. And so which age group you especially aim to reach? In. The apparel. Hmm. The apparel is the main, the main focus. The apparel hmm. is the main focus because they have the main problem, the main issue, especially going e-commerce, uh, because their returns are so high. They are, today they are suffering from a for huge globally, amount. Or for especially in Turkey? Globally. globally. Yeah, globally. All, all the world today, if you were looking at e-commerce and uh, in apparel, hmm. they are suffering from a lot of hmm. returns. And it's cost them very, a, a lot of money. They are paying for each uh, uh, item they sent they, they are paying about between four and seven US dollars for one way. So imagine if you, re if you need to return it, they need to pay again. And if the item ar uh, arrive damaged, mm -hmm. so they lose the item itself. So they're paying a lot of money on back and forth. And even now when the apparel market is going through the di digit digitization uh, process, when even you're going to a store and you want to select something, you would rather want to understand what size you need in mm -hmm. that specific store, right? It will make your life much easier as a consumer and it will make the life of the store much easier. So when yeah, you enter course. the store, you will know that, ah, in this store, in this dress, I'm size six or I'm size four. And every store have their own size chart and you're mm. getting lost in the size chart as a consumer. But it will be very easy for you to understand, ah, I like that dress. What size am I in that dress? It automatically will tell you that you need size four. And it will direct you in the store where size four in that specific dress is. And that is part of where the apparel market is going to. How to make the stores much more viable, much more uh, appealing to the consumers so we don't get lost. We, don't, we, we won't only get stuck in the e-commerce market because stores are fun. Stores are fun to be. And my size, I think, yes, but sold a big problem. Yeah. Especially for women. Actually. Especially yeah. for women. For men yeah. as well. For men as well. We don't, we don't tell it, but for <laughs> men as well. For us, we have an issue with sizing as well. And um, which new features we, we, will we, we will see on my size? Uh, what is the news? So we have several uh, things uh, in the pipeline. One of it, for example, is family account. What family we, account. Yes. What we found out is that women usually are buying uh -huh. for the entire family. When they're going online, when they're going for stores, they're mm -hmm. buying for the kids and they're mm -hmm. buying for the husband as well. Imagine if you, as, as a wife that have family, next time you're going online, you will know the sizes of all your family in each and every brand. So I will make my profile, mm -hmm. my kids will make their profile, and you will have the ID of all the family in the family account. So when I go in, uh, online next time, I can buy for you and I can buy for the kids. When you're going online next time, you can buy for all the family because you know their actual sizes and you can buy them through the online th through our technology. So it's very easy for us to make a family buyout. Mm -hmm. For the retailer, it's easier as well and it will increase 
the, the, the cart uh, when you're going online. And that is one of the uh, main issues mm -hmm. of that. Other things that we're coming on, on in the pipeline is to get your silhouette mm -hmm. and where, where is the areas that you get it more tight on your body, yes. where you get it more, more loose on the, on, on the body, where you can actually select which type of garment will more fit you. Mm -hmm. For example, if that, this dress will be more tight here where you don't like it, but other dress will be more loose here where mm -hmm. you like it better and you will see it on the silhouette mm. based on your actual measurement and the item you want, to, you, you want to get, you will get more comfortable in buying that dress. It's all about uh, what's, how comfortable and how confident are mm -hmm. us as a consumer when we're buying something. And what is your market targeted uh, for Nasdaq especially? Market targeted? Yeah, market targeted. Um, now we're because we're a Nasdaq uh, company, and mm -hmm. and and the product itself is is very sexy. It's a, it's a product that is very understandable. It's mm -hmm. an easy product. It's easy product to sell. It's easy product to understand. And now we are starting to push to push ahead because until today we are just being developed. We developed the product. It took mm -hmm. us very long to develop this product. It's not an easy product to develop. Mm -hmm. And we wrote four patents on the technology itself. So two of them were already, already granted worldwide. So now we have the infrastructure. We have the infrastructure to sell, and we have the salespeople as well. Mm -hmm. So now we are starting to gain mm -hmm. momentum in sales. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the target this year, the, pro the market itself is huge. Mm -hmm. Both apparel and the logistic, I'm not talking about the DIY, are huge markets. Mm -hmm. The penetration, the, 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 it's, it's almost endless market. It's just going bigger and bigger every year. Again, we haven't uh, projected any projection yet, but now this year, 2019, is the year of starting getting revenues mm -hmm. into my size. We start selling, we start uh, signing deals. Hopefully by mid-year we can get some sort of projection out there. So hopefully in the next show it will be will be here. We can we can share this with you. And my last question: um, Do you looking for other emerging market countries for investments? Do you planning of new investments? Always, always. We're looking for several things. One. Because we raised into my size about $20 million uh, into the company from, different, uh, from several rounds of, uh, of, of financing raise, so we have enough money in the bank to fulfill our R&D roadmap for my size, and we're looking as well for acquisition, for major acquisition to get other uh, technologies into my size to get our solution much wider for, to offer mm -hmm. retailers and logistic partners that, that we have today. So we always look in how to get these other technologies in emerging market and to bring our technology into emerging market. Mm -hmm. as, we, as we have now, we're focusing on the US and Europe. We have a lot of demand from China, for example, that to come in, a lot of demand from Japan as well to come in. But as, as of now, we're focusing on, do, on, on, to these, uh, on, on these two areas, on US and, and Europe. Mm -hmm. And hopefully 2020, we'll get new markets coming in. And in Turkey, we are trying to feed, we are trying to grow to the startup market. And uh, what do you think about the main difference between emerging markets and developed markets about the startup projects? Um, startup is, is something that is about consistency. Because our program name is uh, Startup World. Yep. So. One, of the, one of the main issues with startup is, is First, be consistent. Be consistent and don't let go. One of, mm. This is my fourth startup. Two of them crashed and burned and invested a lot of money and brought in. And it's don't give up your dreams, but check them out. See that the mm -hmm. dreams actually have a problem that you can solve mm -hmm. in the real market, that somebody actually wants to, to pay for them. Develop something that nobody can compete with you, if it's IP or a secret sauce that you have, do something that you can sell and you can protect as well for yourself. Build your business model, see how you can get that. Don't give up on your company mm -hmm. too, too easy and be consistent in what you do. And I think that's one of the main secrets of building a startup and the country needs to help as well. The country needs to help as well in bringing the right places, being the right culture in motivating all this thing because being a startup guy, being a startup somebody 
kid start, mm -hmm. starting something up, you have so many obstacles along the way, so many obstacles along the way. And it's to get every one of them, all the ducks in the row, to make that happen. And the surrounding needs to help. Thank you very much for joining us, Ronan Luzon. Thank you very much for having me. Evet, MySize CEO'su Ronan Luzon'u ağırladık bugün girişimcilik dünyasında. Ee, özellikle aslında dört tane startup'ın da e, kurucusu olarak dedi ki vazgeçmemek, pes etmemek gerekiyor. Çok fazla zorluk olacak ama yine de yola devam etmek e, gerekiyor dedi. Tekrar kendisine teşekkür ediyoruz ve programı kapatıyoruz. Hoşçakalın.